Yo. Can see hey, what's up? How you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I can. I can see you. I see you're playing. Okay, okay, okay. Hey, I'm, I'm, I, I'm on. Uh, I joined you instead. I think it's simpler. I, I went to. Uh, I have an account on chess.com. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's what I used to play. Sure, on. Yeah, we can do this. We can play. Okay. Um. So how do you set this up? Do you send me uh, an invite or a link or something, and I click just, on it? Just click on. Click on play. Just there's a play button right there, or the second one below yeah. home. Yeah. Got it. And just click on play and live chess, and I'll just all um. Oh no. I'll challenge you. It's XQCOW, right? Yeah, XOW1. Q. Okay. So, how you doing, man? You, you always sound really high energy. That's kind of rare. One second. You doing good? Wait, so it's just t tell me again what is it? It's XQC. OW1. OW1, okay. Yeah. Why don't I see you? 51,000 players online playing chess, boys. This game is not dead. This game will do pretty well on, uh, on Steam charts. Actually, can you, can, you click on the, um, can you click on the binoculars to the, where the chat is? Um, on the on the right hand yeah, side, I see the it. second one. Yeah. Uh, no, no, on the right hand side. Yeah, right, right, right there. And can you type in um, uh, Hikaru? Just type it in in that little spot, right where it says um, where there's the question mark. Um, H i k a r u. Yeah, it's not working. Okay. It, it, maybe you're like a pure offline or something like that, or yeah. I don't know how this works. How long do you want to play? I'll have someone start the game. How, what time control do you want to play? How much time? Um, a 10. A 10 is 10, 10? standard. Okay. Yeah, that's good. 10 is like rapid, right? Um, 10 is, yeah, 10 is like rapid chess. It's not like, class, the most of the games account for the rankings are super slow. They go like five hours, which is completely ridiculous. But yeah, online you play like, most people play five minutes or three minutes. So uh, it's a little bit quicker, but but 10 minute chess is like, I'm number four in the world at that right now. So I like 10 minutes as well. I'm really good at the fast stuff. Like the one minute stuff is totally my, my, my thing, but okay. I like it all. So is there like, um, is there like metas, like certain ways people play in, in different modes that are like uh, sort of predictable or some like strategies people have like cheeses and whatnot when it's like shorter games. Yeah. So like one, one thing, um, yeah. So the game star, I'm, I'll, I'll show you, just play the first couple of moves, I'll show you an example. I'm not gonna do it on the board, but I'll, I'll give you an example. So, like, okay. So you know how to, you know how to play in the center, right? Yeah, uh, it, okay, so obviously you give me a, a, a piece, but your queen's gonna get it. Right. Okay, but, and now, and now, now you have more space because you're already kind of like developed, so now. Uh... Actually, um, that's not true. So one of the things you don't wanna do in chess normally is bring your queen out really early in the game because what you do is the queen can be attacked. So in chess, when you're developing your pieces, you don't want to have your pieces getting attacked or you have to move them a lot at the beginning. Um, and when you bring the queen out, of course, every other piece in the game is worth a lot less than a queen. So when someone attacks your queen, you have to move your queen away and that actually helps your opponent develop their pieces faster. So what I'm doing is not the best, uh, best opening. Okay, so, okay, this is another question. Yeah, uh, I hope these questions aren't dumb, but no, overall, it's all good. Overall, I'm, I, I just want to ask like a base question. Like, let, let's say um, I did this, okay? So I challenge your queen. Uh, mm -hmm. what, okay, trading is bad because you don't want to be on equal, on equal footing. You always want to be sort of ahead, or you want to do moves that are that are making you win, not making you equal. Is that you know right? So, so you um, you trading here wouldn't be good. Players, but against me, you would not want to trade. And the reason I would say that is because the players who are better, the big advantage in in the game as you get better and better at it is as the game gets towards the end game. So with less and less pieces, the top players are much more precise. They make no mistakes towards the end of the game. So someone who's weaker, what they want to do is they want to attack and try to get them earlier in the game instead of going further into the game with less and less pieces. Okay. This is a good move, actually. It's completely fine. Um, Love your so normally what, you, what I would suggest that you want to do, though, is to bring out your knights and your bishop and castle as opposed to trading queens. Do you know what that is, castling? Uh, yeah, when you click on your king and then you swap... Right, so so your next move is pretty obvious here. Yeah, and then I get... Right, and so now like now that you've developed this knight, the next thing that you want to do is move the bishop and castle, bishop. and when your king is no longer in the center of the board, it's, um, it's much harder to attack. Because the only way for me to attack is push pawns towards your king on, on that side of the board. So like, if I play a move like this, which is, which is not a move I normally would play, you see, when your king goes to the side near this pawn that I just pushed, the pawn isn't really enough to attack. So if I push the pawn up the board, it's just one pawn. So I don't have a lot of pieces near the king. So you really want to get the king off to the one side of the board through castling. Okay, makes a lot of sense. Okay, and then 
you, you can't really push that pawn either. It can't be a threat because the, uh, my knight's going to pick it up, right? Oh, yeah. Um, actually, that would be... It, it is... Your knight can't pick up the pawn because I have a rook that would capture it when I push it up one square. True. Un uh, okay, okay. So okay. just follow the basics. Try to get castled. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll do... Um, okay. So I would move my bishop... Just, just I, I, I would develop them, but do, do I not want to go too far? N not like, um, do I just put them like, is that good? It's the best move, man. You're, <laughs> you're not bad at this game. Um, so like, yeah, you want to put the bishop on squares like this because the bishop hits this pawn near my king. Now, of course, in this position, you wouldn't take the pawn because my king takes your bishop. Yeah. But you keep an eye on this pawn and you keep an eye on this diagonal towards where my king is. So this is a very good move. It's the best move in the position. Okay. That's good. Okay. Uh, boom. So you see, when I push this pawn ahead, I tried to stop you from attacking this pawn that's that's on right next to my king. So yeah. I try to, to take away these threats here. Okay, for future moves. Right? So yeah. And, and, and basically, you don't want to give away a bishop for a pawn. The bishops and knights are equal. A bishop is, is worth the same as a knight. But then, like, a queen is worth a lot more, and then a rook is worth a lot more as well. Yeah. And then pawns are worth one, and bishops and knights are worth three. So if you do that, like, you're just giving away a, a piece that's not as good. Because if you think about a bishop, bishops can move all over the board. Pawns can't. They can only move one square. Yeah. So now here, try to develop... If you uh, look at the position, you castle your king. So now you have these pieces on your um, on the other side of the board that are, yeah. that are still on their original squares. So I... Right now, I kind of want to develop like um, my, my bishop for later, so I kind of want to go pawn first. Again, like, I mean, people are saying you're, you're, you're not good at chess, but you're, you're finding the right moves. Like, the thing is, you do want to play this move because you want to now take space as well. When you push this pawn, like, it prevents me from doing stuff um, on the squares near this pawn. So it's a perfect move, and now you can, you can move the, the other bishop to the other yeah. square. So I'm going to play another move, and now... You should find the next move because it's the exact same theme as before that you found with the other bishop. Um, yeah, of course. Um, move the bishop. Try to move a bishop where you can attack something, where you can threaten a, a pawn, a piece, something like that. Because you developed one of your bishops, so now you want to develop the other bishop. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, I should get. Uh, okay. That's okay. I'll give you a chance. But you, there, you move the uh, there's a move with the other bishop that's really good here. Oh, uh, I see. That. Actually, you you should have gone one square. Uh, you should have gone to the square before that because it would have attacked the pawn. Attack because... the pawn. Go ahead. Yeah. So you went to the square G five. If you yeah. see the coordinates. Yeah. If G5. you went to the square right before it, which is F four, you would have attacked the pawn on that diagonal. Oh, I see now. Okay, yeah, 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 I get it. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, so that so so because you see, that's the thing with the other one when you put it on the other diagonal to bishop, the pawn was protected. But here, the pawn was not protected, so you would have been threatening to win a pawn. True. Okay. No, you're playing. You're playing great so far. Okay, I, I'm just going for the trade here. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Again, perfect, perfect. Now, see, this is one thing. What you're doing is completely fine. At the more advanced level, the bishops are better than the knights, but that's a very advanced meta. So, like, a really good player would not give away the bishop for the knight, but at your level, it's completely fine. Okay. Um, you finish the development with your knight. Now, like, basically in this position, your king is good. You've castled it. It's not in danger. You've moved your knights and your bishops. You have a pawn in the center. So, really, it's all about your rooks now, just getting the rooks into the game. But be careful not to hang any pieces in the next move or two. Yeah. Okay. I see. I see. Okay, so if I, if I move my bishop to, to a4, then you're... You're, you're, Any you're gonna... really is fine, but yeah, but I, I, I would probably move it back towards the center because yeah. if, if, you think about it, if you move it away towards the edge of the board, it's not it's much less effective. Like think of, if you move this bishop, just can you move the bishop to d3 here. 
Oh, that 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 was what I was aiming for, yeah. yeah. So 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 the reason this is better, if you think about it, the bishop on the edge, it has one one diagonal towards the king on the back rank. But here, the bishop has two diagonals. Like you can go one way and the other way, but you create threats on both sides of the board. So like in general, you want the bishop more towards the center. Oh, where center, it has yeah. More to okay, I get it. So if you go aggressive to towards my pieces, I have a chance of getting a diagonal backwards and forward the same. Sort of, sort of same yeah, thing. Yeah, you have more diagonals to use the bishop on, and that's what that's that's what the bishop serves. That's the purpose of the bishop. Okay. Okay. Okay, now that's that's a mistake, um, but it's a mistake for. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, it's okay. You, you, you yeah. know, you can be comfortable. You can just, yeah. you know. So this is what's called a tactic. So the reason it's a bad move is because now I can remove one of your pieces, and now you, you lose a pawn here. Oh, you get one for free. Yeah, and actually, I get more than the pawn for free. I get more more stuff for free. That's good. That's good. Okay. So in this position, think think about it this way: like you're you're down one pawn here. You're gonna you're gonna lose material. Your knight is under attack from the bishop, and if you move the knight, you're gonna lose the rook. Um, so you have two two options, but you want to get something in return here. So you don't just want to give away a piece for free. If you if you have to give something away, you want to get something in return. So it's probably better to like give away the rook and get a bishop instead of just giving up a free free knight for nothing. Okay, okay. In here, I'll be honest, I don't see how I could lose my rook. But you mean by moving out well, of the well, way? Think about the position. You're going to lose either your knight or your rook, right? Because if you move your knight, then I take your rook. If you don't move the knight, then you lose your knight because the bishop will just take it. Yeah, okay, I see it now. It makes a lot of sense, yeah. Good. Yeah, see, also, I have more. I have many more pieces now. Like, I've got two rooks, and you've got one rook. So when, when you're up, when, when you have more more pieces, you actually want to sometimes trade trade the pieces so when they're less and less, your pieces um, are much better than your opponent's. So if, if you're playing no, a game and you are off. you have, like, extra rook or extra bishop, extra knight, you, want to, you, you do want to try to trade off pieces because the less pieces your opponent has, Pudu. the less chance that they can checkmate you or attack your king. Yeah. I'm thinking about something. Okay. I, I I feel like I have to trade here. Yeah. Okay, champ. And the, the first thing you should do is is when um when it's it's your turn, like even if it's very quick. Is you should look to see if there are any pieces that your opponent can capture. If there's any any anything that's not protected by like a pawn or something. Like in this case, I take the knight. Okay. So like I would say at, at your level, the first thing is look at all your pieces. See if there's uh, if all your pieces are safe and secure. And if they are, then like then think about like trying to put pieces in the center or put a bishop on the right square. Um, but first and foremost, at your level, just try not to um, give up pieces for free. Okay. I'm going to check your head and see. Okay. Okay, so that's the mythology I should use then. That, that, like, that, that, that's what should be like the, the mental going to it. Like the methodology. Yeah. Yeah, the first thing that you should always think about is just just look at your pieces and see if, if everything is secure. That's that's the first thing you should always do. Okay. Um, and then after that, it gets more advanced. I mean, but that's the first first thing you should always do. Now, like we're playing ten minutes, so you can do that. 
Um, and now I'm gonna make a mistake just just to show you another another uh, another thing here. Okay, so my move was very bad. Um, and the reason it's a really bad move is because I can't take your bishop here. Right? Um, let me think about this. Yeah, because otherwise you put, you put your, your king in check with my uh, rook. Exactly, yeah. So, so like, this is the other thing is, like, you want to look for this. Like, th this is what's called, like, a pin in chess, where, like, you can't take a piece because you put your king in check. And also, if this was, like, let's say it's not a king here, if it was a queen, I still would not want to take the bishop because then I would give up the queen. Yeah. So... So the pin, this pin idea is very, very um, important in chess. Okay. So think of, actually here you're gonna you're gonna lose something, but but use that basic thing that I said. So think about your pieces. Is there anything? Yeah, yeah. Everything secure or not? I'm um, thinking something. So now what I would want to do is def you're going to get a uh, a free pawn. Exactly, and you can't really protect the pawn because to protect the pawn you would have to move your rook. But then you would lose your bishop. Yeah. No bishop because because then your king isn't your king isn't pinned anymore, right? Exactly. Yes. So yeah. so, so so here's something. It's a situation where things are gonna die. Like we're gonna about a brawl. Yeah. Yeah. Finish absolutely. Platinum weird champ. But here you'd rather lose a pawn than a bishop. A pawn is worth one, and a bishop is worth three points. Okay. Okay. I thought I had a way out to do a good to do a good move here that would make me come out ahead, but there just isn't. Like like we're going we're going down here. Yeah. Okay, um, I'll pop up my pawn. It's fine. Okay, let me think about this. Okay, okay. It, I'm trying to think fast because for some reason, like it, it's hard to think fast. I feel like whenever you like you're learning a game, because yeah, because mm -hmm. you have to go through like all the branches of ideas, and some of them are flawed. Like they, they just you know like oh this piece doesn't move this way or whatever, right? And you, you don't right, have that because right. you, you don't even have to mm -hmm. think about that. It's automatic. So here's like yeah, no, it's, it's very hard. It is H7. actually very, very hard. Um, so here, if I move my rook and you, and you get my pawn, I get I get your pawn, but then then you can pick up my my bishop above. So it, right. that's a losing trade overall. I, I exactly. Yeah, I lose a big one for. Yeah, I, I think it's why there's no winning moves. It's all losing by slow fire moves. Yeah, exactly. So so what happens here? This is what I was saying earlier. This is what we call the end game in chess. So when you start counting it up, white has a uh, rook, rook and a bishop and four pawns. Black has a rook and a knight and six pawns. So I'm actually up two pawns here. And in, in and in a, if you're a grandmaster, you're really good at chess. This is KSDD, already this position. I would win this a hundred times out of a hundred against anybody in the entire world because it's just there are too few pieces on the board to create enough attacking chances. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Um... Yeah, same thing here. It, it, every move you're doing is breaking my pin. Mm -hmm. 31 oh, okay. months. Okay. Now, Can I get to XQCM in the chat? You see why that's a bad I move? move? I mean, it's, it's a move I, I that now. Sense. No, it's, it's, it's a move that makes sense, because by moving the rook, you protect but the pawn. Like, I can't Pepe take the pawn. Enough. The problem is that I have this knight, and now I take the rook. Yeah, and then I and I take the knight, and that's not that's not a winning trade. No, no, a, a, rook, a rook is much better than a knight. Think of it like, now... Like, look at this. I have a rook, and you have a bishop here. My rook can move all over the board, and it can ta it can attack all your pawns. It can attack the bishop, um, and the bishop can only move on th these uh, on the Kay diagonal. Felix. And if, if you Who think about it, is this if I put tool? all these pawns he is on, really on dark to square, piss me off with the, the bishop can never attack them because the bishop can only move on, on the light seconds. squares. He's so, like, a rook can go around and attack on all different color squares throughout the board, but the bishop can't. Yeah. And a knight is the same way. It takes a knight. Knight moves in the L shape, so it takes a while to get around as well. Okay. Well, and, and it, okay. I feel. I feel like it. At this point in the game, like you see all all the trees of where things are gonna go, right? And it's kind of like. Um, yeah, for me, like I I know exactly how this is gonna end, pretty much. Yeah. Because there isn't like there isn't much cra crazy special things you could do, and and if you do, it's slow. You know, like the pawns move one one space at a time and then you can you know exactly where they're going with this before it even happens right like you know like yeah. exactly where everything is going to go i know i know exactly yeah i know exactly where things are going so like here you see you get this bishop here it attacks this pawn but i can just put all my pawns on the on the other on the other color square so you can't like the bishop can't attack anything 
Yep, I see it. So this is why, like, bishop, a bishop by itself is not a very good, good uh, piece. You need, you need the knights. You need, you need like rooks and, and other other pieces here. Oh. Yeah, that's my only hope of ever getting a piece back. Right, right. Unfortunately, the the next next move is coming. Next two moves are coming no matter what. So, do you see what my next move is here? Um, there's a, there's actually a checkmate here for me. Okay, that would be. If you, if you think about it, like I've got I've got the rook, and I, I want. One thing you want to do when you're towards the end of the game, both players don't have many pieces, you try to look for checks. So you want to attack the king. So okay. I, I think also that's another thing. You should always look for ways to put the king in check to attack the king. Um, because here, like, I can move... Yeah, I see now. G4. Square, and there, there's this... Uh, actually, I go to this H4 square, the very edge. And you'll see this is checkmate, because your king has no squares around my king. Okay. So, so, so yeah, this is, like, this is a forced checkmate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can you walk me through? Um, okay. Like. Um... You want to do one more quick one? I, I can. I. We can do. Yeah. We can do another one. And so I'll show you. Like this is how. What the way I'm going to play is probably how you should. Um, I'm going to give you an opening to try. Okay. I'm going to give you an opening. So you can play. Play. Play whatever your first couple of moves are, and I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you an opening to play with white. Okay. Yeah. So. So like, this. The opening that I'm going to suggest for you. Oh, can you can you uh, refresh your page? We're going to give you the GM title just temporarily. He just refreshed the chess.com page? Yeah, I have it. Okay. Should give you a GM title, I think. Yeah, I have it. I see it. Okay. Yeah, so, okay. GM. So, the, the opening I'm going to give you here, yeah, you're now a GM. <laughs> Grandmaster, man. Okay, so I'm going to put the bishop here. And the point is, I want to move this bishop where I like attack. I keep an eye on this pawn again next to the queen. Yeah, oh, yeah I see it now. Yeah, uh, what is this called, this, uh, this opener? This is called, uh, it's basically called the London, London system. Okay, cool. That, that is like the only thing that, uh, the, the only opener or uh, I, I I say like one or two openers or three. And that was one of them. It's one that I like the most, yeah. but yeah, I, I don't know good. how to do that. I don't know like what to do next from where you're at, but, um, so, so okay. So, you, so you're black here. So what you want to do is remember, you want to try to develop your pieces. So yeah. normally that means trying to develop your Bishop, your Knight and, and then castling your King. This is a completely fine move too. And so you, so like here, what I did was I moved the pawn, the bishop, and now I'm going to push this pawn in front of my king. So now I can move my other bishop, and then my knight, and then I can castle. Yep, I see it. Okay, so see, you put this bishop in front of your pawn, uh, the pawn in front of your king. So by doing this, you now have to make a decision where your king is going. Um, because when you do this, you can no longer push your pawn in front of your king to move the bishop next to your king out. Okay. Um, you kind of have to move it the other way. You would have to push the pawn in front of the knight to then move your bishop um, if you want to move your king towards the king's side. Um, if you want to go towards the queen's side, you can move the queen and then move your king over uh, to, to, the, uh, to the left. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest with my train of thought. What I thought there is that my king was in my queen spot, and I was I was gonna castle, but or castle whatever. But mm -hmm. it's my yeah, queen yeah, in that yeah. spot. So uh, right, yeah. okay, but that, that's that's fine. I mean, it's more important that like where you are, that you that you're just you're you're thinking about the basics, that you have some basic thought behind the move. That's that's much more important um, than anything else. Cool. Okay. Oh, whoops. Sorry, my bad.
Right. Okay. So, so yeah. So, so here, like, um, right. So here, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, I move my bishops out, right? Yeah. They're both out. So, so now I'm going to stick to the plan. I'm going to move my knight out and next move. I'm going to castle. castle. Yeah. Okay. That's good. So now I castle. Okay. So, so yeah, it, good. So, 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 so why did you play this move? I played it so I could move. Okay. So if I move two forward, I do, I have a losing trade with your Bishop, but if I move only right. one square, I don't engender anything and I can, I can release my Bishop to the left on H6 and then castle my bottom. Actually, you, you would go to the square right next to it. Cause if you go out two squares, my Bishop would capture your Bishop. Okay. I see. Yeah. I see now. But still it's, it's, it's the thought process that's, that matters. So yeah, you move the Bishop, you castle, and this is exactly what you want to do. So, if you saw me, me playing it the way I mm -hmm. was, you know, you know exactly all the moves I was going to do. It was all obvious. And if I didn't, it would have been... Uh, yeah, I mean, they're different. You can put your pieces in, on different squares, but the basic point that you want to do is you always want to move the pieces around your king and get your king out of the center of the board as quickly as possible. Okay. Okay. Now, I see how this is developing. So, basically, all of this is like uh, the middle... Uh, mm -hmm. I feel like since I've fallen behind on developing my, pieces, my, developing my pieces in the middle, this brawl, you already see it ahead of time. And it's going to be like, uh, I take your pawn, you take my pawn. Um, if I... Oh, it's not even that bad. Yeah, if I, if I take the other pawn, you take, you take my knight. Uh, it's overall yeah. losing trade here, completely. It, it's, not, it's not losing, but it's de they're definitely... They're definitely... Yes. But see, this is very advanced. Like, the problems that you have here, this is what we call like positional play, where it's like where the pawns are on the board and how they restrict the pieces. So like in this position with where your pawns are, it's already bad, but this is like, I mean, this is like grandmaster level. This is so far beyond what, what you should just be looking for like the, the one to two move sequences where you're gonna trade like pawns or, or bishops and knights, and then make sure all your pieces are secure. And th that should absolutely be, be what you focus on. So now I'm gonna play a move that, that's quite tricky. I'm gonna play a move that's check. So now, Think, just think for a second about what is um, what's happening here. Like, if any pieces, so so your king is in check, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm also threatening your knight, right? Yeah. So if I'm if I'm okay. So basically, now since I'm in check, I have to make moves that are just purely to defend my king, not to die. And then from there, you can just pick up whatever you want. So if I'm if I move my this is true, but think but, but one second, one second. Go ahead. If you move your king, you're gonna lose this knight that my queen is right next to. Right. But is there a way that you can move your knight where it's not gonna you won't lose your knight but you're not in check anymore? Yeah, you're right. That and Yeah, so what happened is sure you, you made a move that is that's actually like not a good move, but you don't lose any material. Yeah. Your knight is still save saved and you can move your king on the next move. Okay, so now I will offer you another trade. Okay. Now this is this is a bad move, but the reason this is a bad move is because remember what I told you what you want to do at the start of the game is that you want to get your king out of the center. Yeah. Right? And now you can't get out of the center because my bishop covers the square. Oh, true. I can't cancel anymore. Okay. Right. Yeah, I, I tried to win the trade in a more like a, yeah. That okay. I I understand now. No, but it's okay. I mean, I would say at your level, it's the mo most most important thing is to try not to um not to give away pieces, not to lose pieces for free. Like where you give away a knight for nothing or for a pawn is if you can just keep the trades where it's even. The trades are even. That's the most important thing. Because I mean. You can't, you can't, you can't understand all the all the strategies yet. It it that would take too long. But but you still can maybe try to get your king out of the center. It's probably going to be quite hard now, but you can try. Yeah. 
I see some sort of pathway. Good. That's a very good move. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be very nice here. I'm going to play a, a, another very tricky move. I can't see it. I'm not attacking any any pieces here. I'm, nothing is under attack. But if you castle, there's a very, very nasty move here. Okay. Okay, but now I... That's a, actually, th this loses material, but, th but co the concept is good. Because if I take the knight, what would you do? If I take your knight with my pawn, I, I take the pawn and then I take I, then I take the bishop. Okay, whatever. I'll do it anyway. I'll, I'll give you I'll give you some material here. Oh, I can't because my queen is in check. Or my king is in check because of the queen. No, but I made an intentional mistake here. Just think for a second. Oh yeah, I, I see what it. happened. Um. Wait. My queen is in check. Yours is. I understand now. Yeah. So see that that's what happens. Like is when you take. I should have traded the queens. But the point is that there are these little little in between sort of tactics where if you where if you take the wrong piece, you end up down material. So I'll move my rook to protect my bishop here. Okay. This starting to make more sense. Um. Yeah, sometimes I put my piece in bad positions because I, I don't think about all the next moves on where that, that like, because you see your, your knight there, I'd be comfortable making a move like that because, uh, you know, your, your knight is like all the way in my pieces, right? It's like in, in like the mm -hmm. ball and I can't, I can't see how he's going to get out of there or, you know, like sometimes like, um, uh, for how long is it going to be safe there yeah. and what are the moves that, that the person is going to develop to get that knight? Right, so if you, if you look at your pawns, yeah, I'm going to put this knight right on the square in front of your king and your pawn, and you can't really get rid of it because you can push your pawns forward. So, like, this is very advanced as well, but this is why when you push pawns, you have to be very careful because what happens is pawns don't go backwards, and you create more more squares around, like, your king that are that are really, um, really, really bad. So I'm going to make a check. And now you're going to get a bunch okay. of pieces. Yeah, and I'm going to put this piece in here. Okay, now actually what happens here is I have checkmate in one. Um, so I play this rook takes, and this is actually checkmate. Because you see my bishop protects the knight, <laughs> yeah. and your king can't go anywhere here. Yeah, I see it. And this is this is why what I'm saying like you want to get your king out of the center of the board because even though here you had an extra queen your king was in the center of the board and so I was able to attack it much more easily than if it were way over on one side or the other side of the board. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and 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 this 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 side gives me a uh, blunders like bl blunders. Are, uh... Yeah, yeah. You can you can look at yeah you can click on you can click on the the um you can click on the uh, analysis I think for the blunders. Okay, and, and how good is that? How good is that? Um, like, like, is this something that you even consider or even look at it like a... Or uh, have you played chess too much that you, this doesn't matter? For me, it doesn't matter. Like, it, it, do, it doesn't matter. Okay. But yeah, at your level, you totally... You, you should check. Like, if you click on the... Um, I think it's, anal uh, it's, the, it's the analysis button. The, if you go right... Um, it should be right above... Uh, it should be right on the middle right. There should be a button that you can click which will show... It's the fourth button. Yeah. So you see where there's like uh, right right above the the binoculars. There's um there's a there's like a computer screen with a mic. Uh, with yeah, a, I see an analysis like board. Yeah. Glass. If you just click on analysis, it brings up the next window, and then you see like you can go every move, and you can see what the, what the errors are. Oh yeah, I see it now. Eighty-seven accuracy. I had a, I had a sixty. I did um yeah. yeah three blunders. Ooh, under blunders, there's missed win. It's like the worst you could do. Okay. Well, it, it says missed win on which move. No, no, it doesn't. I, I just meant like a, if you if you get it. No, no, of course not. Um, well, it's probably missed win for me actually because I, I missed a win. But but yeah, I mean the thing is, the the critical point in this game was on on move eight. So after I push this pawn, if you go go back, um, yeah, just go to the very start and hit the forward button. Uh the forward button. Yeah. Um, analysis is this mass? Yeah. Move it number is. eight. After I played C four, the move number eight C four. Move number eight. Uh, just go to the other the other one with the actual game with the moves. With the moves, the other the other tab, the other tab, this one, yeah, yeah, and then so, yeah, you'll see move eight. eight. This, yeah, go ahead. So you'll see my eighth moves. I push the pawn. C four. 
this is the crit this was the critical moment where what you should have done is you should have just you should have moved your king castle to to the uh, to the right and 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 get out of the center of the board and then you would have been completely fine in the game okay okay uh, like that's the main thing and then worry about trying to trade trade off the the pawns and the bishops and the knights for the same material or, or win win stuff Okay, in, in that position, I this something I do some, some sometimes often, where I over evaluate how developed you are in the middle, and I feel like if I do that, then I play into your hand, and then you have like a one step ahead of me in middle, and then the brawl you end up, you end up coming out on top. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And that's what happened. That's why like you always want to, because like if you think about this position, my king is already out of the center of the board. Yeah. So so it's uh so so it's easier for me now i just want to go and attack you with, with with everything in the center of my board but but for you your king is still there so you're you're like one step behind when you yep. try to you try to attack me but your king is still there so you need to get your king out of there first okay okay that makes all sense. Uh, unless i won't be unless, unless unless i see it directly uh if i feel like it's not like a complete loss in middle i'll i'll go ahead and do my castle yeah, that, that, that's the main thing. Think about trying to get your bishop and your knight away and then castling your king. It can be to the, to the left or to the right, um, but, but that's, the, that's the first thing you should be trying to do. Try to do that every game, and then, then try, to, try to attack, try to win trade pawns or get rid of bishops, get rid of knights. And, um, and, and then, yeah, then think about securing, making sure all your pieces are secure. Okay. Okay, let's do more, and then I want, I want you to show me some, uh, some, some one-minute one minute, uh, brawl action. Sure. Okay. Okay. Sure. How do you reset this? You just go. I'll, I'll just I'll challenge you again. Um, I'll challenge you again. Yeah. Or actually, uh, can you click the accept button? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So actually, no, no. Um. Go ahead. Okay. Well, I was gonna say you should play the opening setup that I suggested that you play, but it's it's fine. Wait, um, wait. Is that not it? No. So push the pawn in front of your queen, not the king. Oh, and you do it uh, from the left side. Yes. Exactly. So so I'll play this. Oh, I, I that's fine. That, that's fine. I'll, I'll, that's fine. I'll just, um, it doesn't matter, but it should be one square forward. It yeah. Be the next uh, square. you know what? The, the, okay. I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. Like when I, when I did this opener for some reason, I do it from the, from the right side. Uh, that's fine too. If okay. you want to do it from the right side, that's, that's fine as well. They both work. Okay. Uh, if you, if you, if you want to start over and do it from the other side, we can do it that way too. No, no, no. I, I want to start over and do it properly with, uh, with, by going to, to F4 okay, instead, so, of, instead so move the of bishop e. up one square to F4. Yeah. Okay, and I'll just um Okay, and now the next thing you want to do is you want to move, move, move your... your pawn in front of the king. Right, and so see now your bishop is outside. You see the bishop if you push the pawn with the bishop on its original square, it's not outside of the the pawns. It's still inside so it can't attack any of my pawns or bishops or any pieces. But now it's outside of the pawns, so it's it's much better placed. Because yeah. like the pawn next to my queen, it's not under attack, but your bishop is keeping an eye on it. And so now you want to develop the other bishop to to the center of the board. Okay, I think I I want to put it here mm -hmm. because this is correct. I feel like, I feel like if I put it on c4, then you move you move your pawn to uh, d5, and I'm threatened in one move, and I have to I have to correct it again. Exactly, and also. If you think about this, the, what I want to do is I want to get my king out of the... But with your bishop on the square, it keeps an eye towards that pawn on the edge of the board as well. Ooh, true. I see it now. So, like, it's not really... A, it's not attacking the pawn right now, but later on there will be ideas where you can put more pieces around, around that side of the board towards where the king is. Okay, so let's... I'm going to move my rook. Okay. And so now that you got your king out of the center of the board, so now you wanna you wanna get all your pieces into the game. So you, you only have two pieces that are not in the game, right? Your knight and your rook, because they're on the original squares. Every, queen is as well, but it's not as important to bring it out right away. So so try to get the rest of your pieces into the game. Yeah, okay, I, I'm I'm so seeing it now. Good move. Very good move. Okay. Okay. Um. Good. Very good. 
so now and th now now for me like my pieces are fine but also my my bishop and my rook next to my queen are not they're not in the game yet so i'm going to try to bring them in as well by pushing a pawn and putting the bishop where it attacks your knight okay then if, if i see that uh... In advance, can I can I prepare for that, or is that like? A... Yeah, you can, and it's only a bishop and a knight, so it's a, it's a fair trade. It's a good. It's a, it's a it's a good trade. It's when you start losing these pieces for pawns that that it's that it's really bad. Okay, so let's... Okay, now I'm going to push the pawn. So, so now that you've finished your, your pieces, you've got your pieces into the game, um, now start looking to see if everything is secure or not secure. Like in this position, everything is not secure for you here. Yeah, um, I see I see this bishop losing. Even uh, There's no good trades for me. Like anything that goes right. on defensive is, is a losing move here. Well, so. if you take the pawn, I take back with another pawn. So you'll get two pawns, but you'll lose either a bishop or a knight if you take the pawn. And you don't want to give up the bishop or knight for pawns. So you can't sure. really do that. So you kind of need to move your bishop away from the pawn so you don't lose the bishop. Mm -hmm. I feel like if I moved it in, in front instead at uh, g5, g5, yeah, it, it, it makes me also vulnerable to like just you making one uh, pawn move and then I'm threatened. Uh, is it? Exactly. One? Yeah, no, that's true. I would push my pawn to attack your bishop. That's That's completely true. Correct. Okay. So, so like here, I'm going to take your bishop next move. You can't move your bishop away. From if you move your bishop up, then my bishop captures it. But if I take your bishop next move, it's a, it's an e it's an even trade. I give up a knight for a bishop, so it's three for three. So that's okay. completely fine for you. Okay, so then I, I can just assume that it's dead and then move on to doing other strategies because I know that that's the exactly, move you're going yes. for. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so I'll take. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so the way you move this knight wasn't wasn't the best way best way to play this because now you're, you're gonna have a problem. I don't know if you can see it, but your knight is under. I'm threatening to take your knight with my pawn. So you should move your knight so I don't give up one yeah. pawn for the knight, right? Yeah, I see it. Um. Okay. Yeah, that was a waste right. move then. I I, I wasn't entirely moved here. On I have this this thing. This is another basic thing. So I told you about the pin where like if you take one piece, you lose a piece to a rook or something. Now the next one I play is what's called a fork. So I push this pawn forward, and you see the problem here is if you move the bishop, you lose the knight. If you move the knight, you're gonna you're gonna lose the bishop. Yeah, I see it. So you're gonna lose something for pawns. But okay, let's so that's it. good. But so yeah, you make the best of it. So you take. So you're gonna get two pawns now for the bishop. Which is which is which is as good as you can do here. Yeah, it's, I, I end up uh, minus one. Yeah. I was told this wasn't that bad of a trade. No, it's good. It's good. You should do it. It's good. It's it's even trade again. Um, I think it's something here. Okay. Good. That's good, because now you secure your pawn as well. My queen can't capture your pawn, because then you'd capture my queen. So that's a good move. So I'm going to try again. Just see if is everything secure or not. That's the first thing. Like with my last move, do I maybe want to take something? 
Good. Very good. Very good. Okay. Yeah. So like here, this should be your first thought process. Make sure everything is secure. Um, and then, then look for other ideas or how, how to bring your pieces more in, into the game. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, um, okay. So see this, when you do something like that, I don't know if it's like a long, like a long con move or you're just like, just, you're just playing to, to, to advance your um, piece it's, or whatever. But it's, it's the reason I played this move is because my knight is not in the game. I want to bring my knight more. Okay. Because on the back rank here, I can't attack any. You can't attack your pawns, or there are no targets. Your knights are your knight is fine. Your pawns, are, everything is safe. So I want to bring my knight where it can play, where it can attack your your pieces. It doesn't do anything on the back rank, so I want to bring it into the game. Okay. So now this knight here. Okay, all, right. all, all, all the things are, are, are laying out in front of me, but see, I feel this, this requires a lot of thinking, but I feel if I, if I knew the game and I played it more, this, this, yeah. this wouldn't be as long as a thought process, because this could take me like yeah. 10 no, minutes I mean, to think about. No, I mean, I think you should just look to see if everything's safe and like, or it's not, like, here I'm actually attacking a lot of things. I'm threatening to take your knight and then take, take back with my queen. I'm also threatening to take your other pawn um, uh, with which the rook was defending yeah. before. You, you have one piece guarding this pawn. But you have two. Uh, but I have bishop and a knight. So there are many threats. So you you kind of want to eliminate the threats, and there's an easy way to uh, to to do it here. Uh, my initial move was been to uh, threaten forward because now your queen's not threatening my pawn anymore, so I can move my queen up. Right. And now I'm going to show you another. Um, well, okay. I'm going to play this move. Right, now this is again another, what we call a fork. So I take, and the problem is here, you're in check, but your queen's also gonna hang. So, so when you move, when you have to move your king, you're gonna lose the queen on the next turn. Yeah, I, don't, yeah, I see now. I, I got, I call, we call a, a jabate. I got jabated. Right, yeah, you thought you were gonna win the queen, and then it's like, wait, no, you're not actually the queen. All right, now I take. Then now, now I feel like you've got it all laid out in front of you. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. Because because next move I'm gonna take one of your pawns because yeah. you have to move the king. Oh, I didn't say I was in check. I I didn't look at it. Um. Okay, let's move my king. Ah, oh, so you see it then. Yeah. Okay. Uh, did you move that? Because you know that if I move my 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 rook forward, I was going to get. You want to move your rook in? Yeah, you want to bring this rook in and 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 win win these pawns. So that's specifically a move to stop your rook from coming into the game. Okay, that makes sense. That's very good. That's very good. Okay. Okay, good. And, and again, you, you, you attack. Yeah. But now I'll push the pawn. Interesting. <laughs> okay. Now I'll bring my rook in to attack. Ooh, and I can't move my king in it to do anything at all. All right, but but it's still. I mean, the thing is, like, you're gonna lose here. I have more. I have rook. I've got a bishop. I have more pawns. But like, still, you should just try not to not to lose lose the material. And and once you once you get that into the mindset, as you play play a few more games, like when you stop giving up material for free, then you can start 
seeing like these two move sequences which win win all the all the uh which win like the queens and the rooks. Mm. Okay, good. Okay, I will take the pawn. Hmm. It's good. I'll move my king. Something's coming. I can smell it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I'm, I'm not. Because you see, like you're, you, you have all these pawns, which I can capturing them. So yes, there, there. I have a. I have something in mind here. Right. Okay, so so here, the, the reason I did all these moves is because now I can move my rook, and this is what we call checkmate again, because when you when you look at your king, it can't move anywhere because the bishop holds these two squares where your king would like to go. Oh. And so this this is another thing, is like if, if you if you if you're looking for these sequences or these ideas with checkmate, I mean this is stuff that I studied very early on when I started playing chess. So like it's just I automatically I automatically see the, the idea of, of trying to, to put the king in this checkmate right over here with this rook and this bishop. Okay. I I feel like I haven't played enough chess to like end game. Like uh I don't know what all of my waste end the game or like close to that. I think like I'm only like just trading until oh I have more pieces I win the game, but I don't really see these like moves like playing out. Or, or right, not. yeah. I mean, the the way to do that would do, would be to do what we call tactics in chess. So it's where like they're they're like combination sequences of like two or three moves in a row where you play one move, your opponent has to play a move, and then you win 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 with checkmate, or you win like a queen on the next move. This is how you get. This is how you would get better if you do the tactic where it's like two moves. You play one move, opponent has to play the next move, and then you win the material. That's how you start to see things. Okay. All right. Want to try? Um. Yeah, let's see. Um. Let's do some 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 fast action one minute gameplay. You, you want you want to play one minute or yeah? Do it. Okay, I'll I'll give you I'll give you some time advantage then. Um. Uh, let me see how they set this up. Okay, all right. So we'll we'll play a game with one minute. I'm gonna have them set my clock to uh, to twenty seconds. Okay, so I'll, I'll you'll have forty more seconds. Okay, just one second. They'll, they'll just do it automatically. Okay. Well, how old are you in uh, in real life? I'm 32. Oh, okay. I've been playing chess since I was seven years old, so I I've been studying this game forever. But now, like all these things that I just explained to you, it's so ba it's so basic for me because I, I mean. I've studied these things over and over and over again. I've played so, so many games in my life that like once, once you play a lot of games, some of these basic, like this Rook and this Bishop idea is very, um, is very, uh, so it's your move. So go ahead. Yeah. Uh. Okay. Okay. So I'm just one second. Let my clock go to 10. Okay. Let's go. Okay. All right. I've got 8.7. So let's see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I knew something was up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty good. I like that. Okay. Yeah. Damn. Okay. 
Um, so what were you doing there? Were you like a... I, I was doing what's called pre-moving, so I was sort of anticipating what your next move were going to be, and th and then I um and then I then I just sort of guessed correctly. So okay. like at, at the start, I was tr what I was trying to do since I had so little time is just attack you very aggressively. But the way I tried to attack you was not good. So if you go to the ninth move when I played this knight move, knight move, yeah, and then you 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 castled your king, which protected the pawn. So if I take with my bishop and my knight, you give up a rook, but you get the knight and bishop, so it's a good trade. Um, when I put my queen out to attack this pawn again in front of your rook, if you just protected the, the pawn with like your bishop, so let's say you move your bishop back one square to this g3 square. Yeah. I can't take this pawn anymore. And actually what happens is I put all my pieces out, but I have not castled here. So my king is still in the center, so what's gonna happen is when I try to castle my king, then, then if I castle my king, you can push your pawn and you can force my knight back and you can take the pawns in the center of the board. So so it's very important. Um, it's very important that like you that's why you want to get the king out of the center. But because I had so little time in this game, I immediately tried to attack you. And it wouldn't it would not it would not have worked if you had moved your bishop back. Um, but I had to try it because I didn't have much time. So okay. I try I tried to cheese you basically with something that would never never work if I played you know, if I played a, another top player, they, they would they would just kill me. Okay. Yeah, I see what you mean, though. By uh, above, um, yeah, you, you can't use your first line of pawns at the back to, to defend the, uh, whatever's happening in front of them, right? Is, is that what you exactly. meant? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, so it's like, that. that's why, like, the the pawn, this, this pawn that you have in the center of the board, you'd like to go back one square so that I can't attack on this diagonal towards your king. But... It doesn't go back, so it's like it's already advanced. So you have you can't really do anything with it, which is why it's important. Like with the pawns, when you move them, to to be careful because if you move them too out too far too quickly, they never go back, and then then mm. then you can end up like losing the game. That's cool. Okay, so what 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 would you do if you were like um because you know like 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 this is fun like this conversation is fun, but uh, I think I'm missing a lot of uh, parts of like uh like 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 the core game itself, right? To where like like um most of the things that you're gonna tell me are like uh or or, or uh, you know are like basic stuff that i should already know by just reading like rules okay. or you know okay so you so so let's do something else then. can you on the on the far left side there's a tab that says puzzles puzzle yeah i see it so click on that and then you'll see something that says um that says like puzzle rush puzzle rush yeah okay so you click on that Okay, and now um, what you should click on here is just um, click on the far right. Yeah, click on the rush and s click on that third one, which says survival with the X in it. Yeah. Uh, no, right below that, right below that, the second line of things. Yeah, yeah, just click that X and then click start. Yeah. Okay. So I guess, yeah, I'll, I'll just, I'll, so just click start. Yeah. Um... Okay, so, so just wait a second. So what you're going to see here is, is now this is what well, we I call... Went here. Tactics, right? So, so I just want to see how you do with this, right? So, and once you take the rook, black takes the queen, right? Yeah. Right, and now this—that's checkmate. So now here, mm -hmm. I. What this is what we call tactics. So it's just it's moves that win the game or win a lot of material at the very start of the game. So like here, again, yeah. I don't see it. Uh, there, there's a rook move. So if I take the rook, I lose, I lose, I lose mine. Right. So, so is there another move you can play with the rook? I can go check the king. Oh, yeah, I see it now. If I, if I check the king, okay, yeah, it makes a lot of sense now. Okay, so by doing those i kind of understand like what are the moves that are like required like uh i started developing like patterns of what makes you win or whatever like, right like... no exactly okay so now here in this position oh you're, you're you have the white pieces so there's there's um there's a uh there's again you're you're down a queen right in this position yeah so you're you're, you're down a queen so you have to, you have to win this game right away if you don't win this game right away then um then there are going to be problems here and he wins, right. and I win here, boom. And it, it checked me, because the king can't move. Your bishop covers the square for the king. Yeah. 
Okay. In this position, I have. You have the you have white, so it's a white move. Think about think about what you're attacking. What do I want to attack here? I see it. Good. I see. So you have one less pawn here. So again, this is, these are like the things where you look to check. You like to checkmate, win, win the pieces your opponent has. Mm -hmm. Then I do. Uh... Just think about: is, are there pieces hanging? Is, is there something that you can capture? Oh, yes, okay. I get it. Please, please, okay. Yeah, I understand. Mm -hmm. so, if he, so if he wants to do something and I catch him in check, then it, it screws everything for that player. Right, right. Because then it sets him back like, one move, unless that move is coincidentally doing both at the same time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right, so this one's very hard. I mean, this, this is very, very hard. This is not easy at all. I feel like in like, this. What, what you wanted, what, what I would, what you probably. Wow, okay, go for it. Okay. Wow, wow. Not bad. Okay, now you have to find. Wow, that's that's amazing. I did not think you would get that last. That really was. Cool. Amazing. Well, they, these aren't very developed. This is like very sort of like uh, early mid game. Yeah. Um. But mid game is going to be more important because I already told you what you should try to do at the start. You want to get your king away out of the board. So middle game, mid game is very important. At, at the level you're at, you're not going to these games where you have very few pieces on the board in the end game. It's all about the mi the middle of the game. Boom. Okay. Yeah. Very good. No, I, I didn't think about it. I thought I would come out ahead in that trade if I got the, if I got the pawn and the knight and you only got the yeah, rook. Yeah, there, there was a, you could have moved the queen over to the side where you would have attacked the rook and put the king in check there. But that's not it's not that crazy. This one should be pretty easy also. I'm, I'm okay. I'm black. I forgot. I right, forgot. so you have two captures. Okay, you see the pawn. You have two captures. You can capture right or you can capture left. But again, remember in this position you want to capture more. A bishop is always worth more than a pawn, right? Yeah, of course. So. Get that, he, he gets it with, with the queen. But he can't take it, that's the point. Once you take, he can't take because the king is in check. The rook attacks the king. Why, why is he in check? Because the rook attacks the king. Oh, the I down. see it now at the back, yeah. And then, and then it's not just the, the, the one piece that he loses. Yeah, sometimes I tunnel vision. I have this thing where I want to attack something and I don't know what that makes my other pieces attack what when I move that one. It's like very like one-dimensional thinking. Right. So there's one more move here. It's pretty, pretty, pretty clear. I mean, this. No, no, stop, oh, stop, oh stop. yeah. Think, 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 think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what are the pieces that you can? You, again, think about the pieces that your opponent has that are not secure. And of course, if you can take a queen. A queen is worth a lot more yep. than um than a bishop. You don't you don't want to give away the knight, right? So you got to save your bishop. Yep. Because a knight, if you give away a knight or a bishop for pawns, that's that's pretty bad. Okay. Uh, I, okay, if I, if I take the pawn, he takes it, I take it, I come up minus one. So Exactly, it, yes. So if I, I, I kind of want to move backwards now because... Well, you don't want to lose the piece, so you, you really only have one option. Oh, and that, that puts his queen at risk. And then exactly. he, has, he has to do a move like you would do to save your king, but... Move. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So now he has to do something that would that would be inclined to save his queen, like he would save his king, and then I'm, I'm, I'm one, one move ahead if he if he got exactly. away with it. Mm -hmm. Okay, this one's very hard. This is uh, yeah, this one's very hard. Okay. Okay. Well, let me let, let me think about this.
Okay, you, you, you don't really want to move your queen here. Yeah. I I figured I, I, I can bait certain moves. Uh, I feel like if I move rook... Yes? Rook, queen takes queen, queen takes queen, rook takes... Rook takes... Uh, rook. Yes, you have it, you have it. Yes, you, you have think, it. So you, what you do is you move the rook. You wait. can't take the rook with the queen because the, then the king is in shock. Oh, see, dude, that's what my thinking is yeah. so one-dimensional. See? Yeah, because yeah. what happens, okay, the, the computer plays a stupid move here, but when he takes your queen, you take the rook first, and the king is in check, he has to move his king, and then you win the queen, and you have one extra rook. So, yeah. So now, he, yeah. If, I, if, I take, if I take the queen with the rook, he... He gets the rook, but you've got a queen for it. But then so I... You want, yeah, because you're way ahead. A queen is much better than the rook. Queen is the most powerful piece in the game. Oh! So you can give up a rook for a queen, you're very happy. Oh, you see, okay, okay. This is another thing that I, another thing that I do that I, that is really bad. So I, mm -hmm. I think of fighting like in other games, like oh, I'm fighting, bang, bang, bang. But I don't think that oh, I do one piece, one piece, but it's a queen, get out, you know? Right, 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 right. It's not, it's not just one for one, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so then yeah. I was like, dude, I, I want to keep fighting to win a trade, but that makes me lose a trade overall because these two pieces weren't even equal to the queen that I just got. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing is, remember, the one for one, certain pieces, like the rook is much better than the knight. The queen, if you can win the queen, though, the queen is by far the most important piece. Yeah. So you win the queen for anything other than a queen, like, yeah, it's not one for one. Wrong move. Okay, patch. Can I go back to it? Uh, what was the move that I had to do? I could have done... Yeah, the, the move, move you played last one was, that was just hard, not an easy one to play. But here, okay, so in this position, think about this. If you capture this pawn, there's a pawn that's at risk, right? Yeah, he can't come close to it. Oh, but he... if you take the pawn, what happens once you take the pawn? He has something that's very good if you take the pawn. He can then run his pawn straight down the board. Straight down the board, and I, and I, I can't catch him. Right, but is, can you push a pawn up the board and get to the end and make a queen before he gets down to the other end of the board and make a queen or not? Yeah, because yeah, because then 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 my king puts this puts it in check and if he goes to get whatever I get, he can't do it. Right, and also so if you push your pawn, think about it like move. So you push a pawn one square. He pushes a pawn one square. You push a pawn one square, one square. You're gonna push your pawn to the end of the board before his pawn gets to the. Uh, and it'll understandable by yeah. one by one move you're quicker by one move and then you can bring the queen back to win to take the pawn and he couldn't chase me down with the king uh, like i said because right, your king was protecting the pawn exactly the king the pawn, so your pawn goes straight all the way up mm. okay let me think about this i do there there's a forcing way to make a checkmate here it's like, I mean, bang, bang, bang. Three three checks to checkmate your opponent here. Fudge. Okay. Wait. Can I see this one? Yeah, you click on, um, yeah, you should click on the, click on the, the red. Click on that, that red X there, I think. And I should pull it up. The, the red X, where below 13. That red X where yep. you got it wrong. Yeah. You click that. Okay, just just X those all out. Right. So now now just hit the forward button and you'll see you'll see the solution. So Nike Boom. three is what was played. Right. So I said I said checks. So the first move you played was correct. You, he moves the knight. You make the check with the rook. Right. He moves the king. Who's the king? I check yeah. it and he can't because now he's now he's pinned or whatever. Well, you check him again, and your bishop guards your rook, right? Guards your rook, yeah. And the king can't go to the right because you have a bishop that covers the square down the board. So he has to go towards the center of the board. And now you can move your bishop for the third check, which is which is checkmate. Okay, and now, and now it's GG. Yeah, yeah, it's game over. Yeah, checkmate is the end of the game. It's GG. Okay. No, these puzzles are pretty good. So people that are good at the game, they can do those like uh, like instantaneously, right? You can just yeah, uh... I can. I mean, I can. Yeah, I can do those in like half a second. All the ones that you did, I can do them in half a second. Yeah. Puzzle rush. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, what what, what one more way to, to to learn and and you know teach yourself the game like you know when you have like time? Just, What's that? 
What would be like a good way to like learn the game uh, fast? Not like speedrun, but you know, like optimize like, your progress. I mean, just, if you do these puzzles, these if if you know the basics, just get your king out of center, and you do these puzzles. These puzzles are would you'd get really good really quickly, especially at the fast at the fast times. Like you would start seeing these things instantly. If you do enough of these puzzles, you start seeing them. When you play these games of like one minute or five minute, you're gonna see these. You're gonna see a lot more, and that that's how, that's how you're gonna win games at that level is because people make big mistakes. At the very top levels, people don't make mistakes. So it's like the, the way you win a game is because of something very deep. Like you put a pawn on the wrong square and 20 moves later, this pawn is on the wrong square and you lose because of where the kings are, or where a rook is in the end game. But um... at, at the lower levels, these tactics, these puzzles, if you just do these, like you do some every day, you'll, you'll get really good really quickly. Okay. It's, oh, it's, so cool. it's by far and away the easiest thing to do. That's very really nice. Okay. Um, for, I... I, I had some like uh, overall like, questions like uh, mm -hmm. I mean I mean um, are you like in a rush or something? Are you are no, you no, like, busy? I'm here. I'm I'm good. Okay. Well, I was just interested in like uh, well, like certain things about you without like you know getting like too personal or whatever. Like uh, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, do you feel like um when you stream chess, do you feel like it's like it's a different experience than doing it on your own? Do you feel like you're getting like worse at the game, or do you feel like you're it's like damaging your play or something? Um, I, I, I think if I was doing it all the time, it would because the people that I play against online are not are not the other absolute top players. Like I can play other grandmasters, but they're not as good as me. So if I if I was like streaming chess every single day, it would affect me over the long term. Um, but I but I don't I, I, I always take some breaks as well. And usually when I'm playing in an international competition, um, I will stop streaming for like a, a week or two before before the uh, before the tournament starts, because yes, if, if, if I'm playing people who are, who are not as good as me and I'm beating them and I'm not having to like put in the maximum effort, which I don't most of the time when I play these other people online, then then it does affect me. Um, but for the most part, it's not it, it's not it's not an issue. OK. Um, yeah, because I, I just had this thing where like uh, like I would compete and play the game on stream and I really like streaming and it would sort of damage my play over time because I did it differently. and I, Right, right, exactly. Because yeah, it's like you know what you have to do, whatever, whatever the meta is. Like you know what you, have to do. And, and it's the same thing with me. Like if I play chess online, I know what I have to do to win the game. But I would never play like that against the other best players because it, it wouldn't work. They're they're a little bit too strong. They're a little bit too good. Okay. They would know how to take advantage of the of the mistake. I would play moves that just aren't quite the best. And so yeah, if I if if I if I do that, it's a problem. But also if I play my best strategies, they can study the game. So it's like it's a cat and a mouse kind of situation. Oh, we're it's not... like sometimes. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so it's like, yeah, so like sometimes you know you you, when I play online, I try to play stuff that's not that best, but then I try also to help myself because if I can get these positions that are not great, then um then uh that then then it's um it's it's uh th then I learn how to get out of the bad spot. Okay. Um. Yeah. Also, what about like. What about like basic things like uh like the, like the chess pro lifestyle? Do you like travel to play games? Do you like uh, go to like other countries and whatnot? Yeah, yeah. Um, so there, there, the tournaments at the top there, it's invitational kind of. It's, I mean, it would be like, I would be like playing like, I mean, I don't know, like the the Overwatch League or something. But instead of the countries being in the U.S., it's like you go, I mean, you you go you go everywhere for every single event. So you go to like, I mean, Russia a lot, like Germany, France, Spain. Um, so it's like all over the place all over the place um i mean actually they're like they're like one or two terms in the u.s but most of most of the competitions are in um are in europe almost, almost all in europe and it's great because you get to travel you get to meet people and um i mean some of these competitions are in these like really really fancy places too so it's it's great okay that's really cool one um, I have so many questions, but I don't want to like bother you with like, like you know. No, no, it's fine. Go ahead. Go I don't make like too much of an interview because the I sat down, I was like, I, I, I actually have a lot of questions, like, uh, you know, things like just like mindset things. What about what about like your your, uh, your 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 confidence and your the way the way you see your own play? Like, does that sort of shift sometimes because some players are getting better and you see them improving or something? Is it like, uh, do you like master the game to the point where it doesn't matter because you only care about your play? Like. Like, like, what is no, like that? At, at the very top level, it's very marginal. The difference is like everybody, everybody can play really good. Everybody has strategies to follow when the game starts. Um, so a large part of it is psychological. So, so for example, there's certain people that I play, like most people in the world who are also at the very top. When I play them in blitz competitions, I, I play almost perfectly. And there, there are one or two people who I play against where when I play them, my level is much worse than it is 
against the other other guys so psychology plays a huge role and then also when you because most of the top players it's it's the circuit where we see the same guys over and over um at the same competitions like if you beat someone like let's say you play someone in a competition you beat them you play them in another competition you beat them like it starts to get in their head that like they've lost you several times and that they can't compete with you so psychology is very very uh very important it plays a very big role that's really cool okay um what about um the, the like the tournament structure and whatnot does it is there like a like prizes like circuits like a like a certain lifestyle that you have to play around the circuits or whatever like yeah so um so th there is a circuit mind you it's uh probably like the top 10 players in the world it's called this thing called the grand chess tour um where basically everybody plays in four tournaments you play in two tournaments that are slow chess the games that go up to five hours and then you play two tournaments with the uh rapid chess so like 15 20 minutes for the whole game and then also uh blitz chess with five minutes for the whole game um and usually because because chess is so much more popular in Europe, if you finish even at the bottom, like let's say it's ten players, you finish tenth place, you still get like ten thousand dollars anyway, um, because they they structure it more in a, a European style. So uh, you get you get money, um, you, you make prize money regardless, actually. But you have to be up there to to begin with. Yeah, of course. Is there like a lot of contenders and like, like people getting like really better and like. I feel like it's, there's, there's been one guy who's been who's been the top player for a while now the world champion uh it's a guy from norway he's he's been the number one player uh in the world for probably like the last seven or eight years but there are there are like two kids who are pretty young who are starting to get really really good um and, and it's, it's crazy because one thing with chess that's different with a lot of other things is now with the internet the best players can come from all over the world so like there's a kid from iran who's like probably the next up and coming chess player he's like 16 years old um and he's already competing with the top chess players uh, but like in the old days, you had to be like in, you had to be around the other guys to get the knowledge. But now you can, any, any, any kid can just like use the computer and, and uh, pick up all this knowledge pretty much instantly. Okay. Then I didn't know there was actual knowledge you could get from other players. Like, uh, yeah. So, so like, okay. So like this, uh, I'm not, I'll, I'll, I'll forget our games that we just played, but, but let's say you played a really good game against me in the games we just played. I would actually remember this game for a while. And then I would go into the chess software and study your, your moves that you played. For, for the first like 10 to 15 moves that you made. And so like there are databases with like uh, millions upon millions of chess games. And so everybody's looking at the same same data. But in the old days, you kind of had to like, uh, you had to be around the other and have the information right there. But now like everybody can just go on their computer and look at these databases with the opening sequences of moves and, um, and learn from it. So everyone has the same information, which is why the psychology plays such a big role. That actually makes a lot of sense. Then, okay, so, so what about when you play online? I see like a lot of like ratings or whatever. Is it like you just queue up and you get matched with somebody and then you get, you get like a plus 0 0.01 ALO or whatever? Yeah, so everybody you play, depending on the ranking, yeah, it's like if you play someone who's like your, your ranking, you gain uh, 10 points. Um, if you play someone who's, who's lower ranking, you can get, lose like 10 points. The max, maximum points you can lose is, is 16. Uh, but it varies depending on your your ranking. But for every game, you gain or lose points. And I usually challenge people. I'm I'm much higher than everyone else on 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 the site. Like I'm thirty. I'm like close to three thousand three hundred. And next player is like three thousand one hundred fifty. So so every time I play these guys, I actually have to beat them by like a, a a three to one or four to one margin in order not to lose ranking points. Damn. Okay. Okay. What about uh? Okay. One more question. What about um? sort of your mindset like do you feel like it it varies like how you're gonna play based on a day because you, you put so much time into the game and you have so much knowledge about the game do you feel like if you queue in the morning or at night it doesn't matter like you feel like when you queue like uh when you're angry or not it won't change your play like uh um i mean like it w if i'm if i'm it, it, emotionally if i'm angry it will i'll play i'll play i'll play much worse and much more aggressively um which, which sort of changed it. Cause like normally against most of the grandmasters I play, I know what I need to do to beat them. And that means like getting the game going further and further where I have more time on the clock and then I can just sort of use the technique that I have at the end of the game. Um, so like if I'm angry, I, I, I go for the, I'm aggressive very early in the game. And then these guys can actually play on the same level that I do. And they can actually like come up with, with moves and, and things that, that actually are good enough to defeat me. So like emotionally it does, but uh, the time of day really doesn't matter. Although sometimes, like, I know that I'm not playing, uh, playing very, very good chess. I can feel it. Like, there are little things, like, I use too much time on this, this sequence of moves, or I'm, uh, 
or you know, I'm not seeing this this move, this combination of moves that where I lose lose uh, lose these pieces. So, um, like, I, I can kind of shift it up a little a little bit because because in chess there are, I mean, probably with the, with the black side of the chess pieces there are like ten different um ten different opening choices you can play even from like move one. So I just switch it up and try to find what works. But time of the day doesn't matter. But uh, me mentally, like if I'm if I'm in a bad mood, I play much much differently. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because for some reason I I see you play. I'm like, oh, like it, this is so like uh, not linear, but it's almost like you you saw in advance, and, and almost like it was almost like a, almost like you're a bot, you know? Yeah, but and that, the the reason is like that. That's why actually I'm I'm very very good at the really fast chess because that's like just intuition. It's like it, I've played so many games intuitively. I I can sense the board. I can sense what are the good moves in the positions. Um, and when you can sense what the good moves are, like you can sort of anticipate then what your opponents will do. Okay. Okay. I I, I have one more. I have one more. Um, one, uh, one more. Yeah. What about like the um, the passion you have for the game, or like the like like the competitive fire? Like, is it still there? Like, does, does the game still passion? Because don't get me wrong, I'm not like um, trivializing it, but. Since it's like such like an, uh, I feel like an, like an old game, and competing, you know, you kind you kind of have to like to travel in the world to like compete. Does it seem like you're like passionate about the game? Do you should like love what it, you know, what it used to be for you. I, I love what the game is, but one of the things, un unlike like a lot of games, because it's it's so old, it's changed. So when I started started getting really good, I, I became like 2,200, which is called the master level in chess. When I was 10 years old, like when I started playing at a very young age. It was more like you just have this wooden chessboard and you like you look at sequences of moves you you have your strategies and that's it whereas now it's much different with the technology so it's like you end up memorizing like hundreds upon hundreds of opening sequence moves at the beginning of the game and um and so like that part of it i don't like to me when i started it was much more like it was much more about intuition it was like a pure it was like much purer because it's like finding the best moves now with the computers um which are better than humans by the way with the computers it's more about like finding the absolute best moves and then mem memorizing the sequences and so forth. Um, so that that definitely makes it tougher. Overall, I, overall, I still enjoy the game, but the like the whole aspect of studying chess is much much harder than it used to be. So I still have passion, but it's it takes a lot more effort and work than than it used to. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay. Um. No, well, thanks for answering all the questions. That's really cool, man. Yeah. I actually yeah, want, no I want to know what it was to be like a like a like a chess pro because we don't really sit off. And we sit it a lot. Of them was like, you know, with all social media, we can we can sort of understand what it is to be like a, like a an esports pro, whatever. But with mm -hmm. chess, it's kind of like um, it's more like in the shadows for us people. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's not it's not out there as much. But that's that's also why I mean I, I like I like the I like I can kind of try to bring bring it out for people like people because if you go see a chess competition i mean you see the fast moves and this sort of stuff but um but it's not like you can't actually feel it or understand it so like i mean like when i do these, these games and you know i make these 20 arrows and all this other stuff like i think it, it's another way of trying to trying to, to popularize it that's cool okay yeah. all right so what again last thing what, what is your um well like your next sort of like event or or or, or big thing to yeah, so like this, this 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 virus kind of killed everything I had. Like I was supposed to play a tournament in um in uh in Romania next month, and a tournament like in London and and, and Paris and all these places. So everything got, actually is kind of canceled right now. But the ne next big tournament will probably be uh, that I know for sure will be the World Championship of, of Blitz Chess and Rapid Chess. Uh, two separate events. It's a competition held over three days, and I played it last year in Russia. And in the Rapid, which is the twenty minutes around, I finished. Um, I believe I finished third place in that, and then in the blitz section, um, I finished in second place uh, as well. So I finished third place and second place, and they have that one time a year, the World Championship, and it's in uh, like December. So that's that's the next big event for sure that I have, and hopefully I win. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, and the prize funds, prize money, by the way, on those is very serious too. It's like a hundred thousand for first prize, so it's quite quite serious. Hundred rocks, that's really cool. Yeah. 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 Damn. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah. all right. <laughs> you have, <laughs> you have, you have a, I, li I like the energy you have, did it? I, I said that before we even started talking, did it? I like, um, like, like the intensity. I like, I like when you, when you talk and it's like, uh, a, 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 like yeah, fast. Going, yeah. yeah. What, uh, 
uh, what about that? I feel like, um, do you have like a, like a daily regimen you do or something like that? Or do you, like, 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 like what is a normal no, day for you? I, you know, I was going to say that's one thing that I, I, I mean, I don't actually, but like what, what, a lot of times when I, when I queue up and I play, play chess online, I'm playing against kids actually. They're, they're very good as well. But like usually when I play like I play like 20 or 30 games against them, they're like tired. They're they're ready to stop. And like usually I just want to keep going. Like it's like I just want to play another 50 games or 100 games with them. So I think it's just <laughs> I have it I have it in me. It's just like I just I just love I just you know That's I love cool. the game. I, I really love playing it. It's just a lot of fun. All right, man. Yeah. Well, um, okay. I'm probably gonna call it here, but I hope we can have like a another like a you know. Like open conversation type of thing, you know. Like, um, sure. I, li I like that. I like this flow of discussion. I could, I could talk for hours about like, uh, running yeah, stuff. I could too. Yeah, no, no, that's I, really it's cool. Great though. Okay, I, 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 fo I follow your stream quite a bit too. So I mean, that's really sweet, man. Well, awesome. I, I, I'm super grateful you took the time to uh, talk to me today, man. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for coming Enjoy on. It. Come yeah. on. All right. Okay. Thanks so much. Goodbye. Bye. That's sweet. I enjoyed that a lot, chat. I'm glad we did it, dude. Chat, I had a lot of questions, but I don't want to. I don't want to be like a like a degenerate interview, Ivan. You know. You get it, chat. Oh, I don't. Chat, he is you coming know? for me. Run away, Leo, Leo. Like if we, if we do if we do it again sometimes, you know, we, we kind of like broke the ice. You know, I, we could have just sort of get on with it. I I didn't want to come out first talk, dude, and pull out the mic and do absolute interview, Ivanko, dude. No. I don't mind that you used to say your level. I know why people get what well, guys listen, listen. This applies to all the competitive games, okay? When you're talking to somebody who is trying to level with you on how to get better, you can't get emotional about the terms that are used. They're using those terms to to, to give you the information you need to get better. You can't say, oh my god, he I said your level because bad, I'm under him. Well, will never say you literally are. Word ever again. You're literally Please worse. Daddy. That person could be doing anything else with their time. This only matters when the person is sort of of your level and he's act like, act like, like some hose. So it's your level. But when the person is, is better at you in every possible way, using your level as a, as a, as a way of talking is whatever, dude. Okay. Watch his straight move. Is he rolling some kids or what? Queen f2 and rook c1, take pigs, mate. Just rook d2 and king e8 is just taking, and this is just good. Um, let's see, just uh, rook c8, queen c8 is good. Let's go check. And it should be, wait a second, rook d1, king d1, bishop g4. Um, and this is what we call a checkmate omegala. Eight. And this okay. is what we call a checkmate check. omegala. Five, queen f6, just take the queen, take the rook. Um, should we take, we take the queen and go d5. Ah, uh, yes. Check, and knight a3 is checkmate. Um, Chat, I am oh, finally going to... g5. Okay, let's see. So he takes, queen b2, takes, takes. Okay, I've got 307, so I have a lot of time. Um... I think it's rookie e2 and just takes and takes and queen f1. So I can play knight e4. Element, and then he elementary takes, data, plays. of course. Uh, what's my move here? Knight e4, f4. What is attack? Oh no, it's knight f5 and queen d5 check, and I win the rook on a8. Jesus. Um, be okay. Takes and takes and rook chat. Three. Ted, chat today we're gonna do a lot of things. Okay, chat. We're doing um, VR three takes in a couple hours. I think I need to go look back at where is everybody at. Yeah, king h four takes. Uh, wait. P six rook h five queen g four. Um. Um. First chat. Chat. Listen. I. I said we play some smash. I want to do some smash first. Chat. I have a lot of energy today. G five. I want. I want to get the energy out there, dude. Because otherwise, listen. Takes and takes. Love your content, it's XQC. Um, this is really good. Seven. I enjoyed this a lot, chat. That was always good. Really